Hi, welcome back to Book Challenger. My name is Juan. I hope you're doing great. So I'm here today to talk about a remarkable and award-winning novel that I read recently. Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie first came out in 1981. The novel talks about India during its transition from being a British colony to becoming independent and immediately after being uh, partitioned into two nation states, India and Pakistan. Midnight's Children is a great example of a postmodern novel and a post-colonial one, and it famously features elements of magical realism. This novel was hugely popular in the 1980s, it won the Booker Prize in 1981 and then was again recognized twice by the Booker. It was awarded the Booker of Bookers as the best novel to have won the Booker Prize twice first in 1993 and then again in 2008. So Midnight's Children is a novel that is both critically acclaimed and a popular success. I first encountered it as a student. I think the novel was assigned as part of the syllabus of a course I took on postmodern literature. But that was a really long time ago and I don't think I even finished it back then. So on a personal note, uh, Midnight's Children was one of those books that I was ashamed not to have read, which is why I decided to pick it up a few weeks ago and I soldiered on until I finished it. And I say soldier on because this novel is not without its challenges. Salim uh, Sinai is the narrator and protagonist of this novel. He is an adult, age 30, who is looking back at his life and telling us what happened to him, other people around him, and in a way what happened to his whole country. You see, Salim was born exactly at midnight on August 15th, 1947, the precise moment when India became independent. But this story does not begin with his birth. Salim goes as far back as 1915 to tell us about his grandparents and how they met. And because the novel ends in 1977, it covers most of the 20th century. So the early part of the novel takes place during the last few decades of British India. Then when British India becomes independent, it is partitioned into two independent dominions, uh, which are India, as we know it today, and Pakistan. Then a few decades later, in 71, East Pakistan becomes what we know today as Bangladesh, okay? And Midnight's Children covers the whole thing, and its narrator slash protagonist Salim is always in the middle of the most crucial events in the history of the three nations, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Salim is a fascinating narrator because, for one thing, he was born with the gift of telepathy. In fact, all the Midnight's children, i.e. all the children who were born in India on August 15th, 47, or at or around midnight were born with special abilities, and that is just one of the magical elements of this novel. Why is Midnight's Children considered to be magical realism? Because it is a realist novel in many ways, at least insofar as it deals with historical reality and it includes real historical people such as political leaders and real historical events. And let's not forget that the novel is set in very recent times and not in the remote past. Midnight's Children was published in 81, as I said a moment ago, and its narrative time goes up to 77, so just a few years before the novel was published. So when a writer includes magical elements in such an otherwise realistic narrative, we call that magical realism. That's a very general explanation of what magical realism is and the best one I can come up with uh, right now. Of course, the problem with magical realism is that sometimes it may feel like the writer is using those magical elements as a narrative cop-out. I'll explain what I mean with an example taken from the novel, but I won't tell you exactly when, when in the novel it happens because I don't want this video to contain any spoilers, okay? So, if the writer needs a character to, say, cross a heavily uh, militarized border, he will have to come up with something intricate and at the same time plausible that the reader is likely to accept. Only that if the writer has used magical elements in the same novel before, uh, before the point when he reaches that border crossing example, he can just make the character invisible, for example. How very convenient, right? 
I don't generally have anything against magical realism. If you've watched my videos before, you probably know by now that I really like uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez's writing and he's famous for using magical realism in some of his fiction. But in Midnight's Children, I found myself rolling my eyes sometimes when I encountered magical realism. And that border crossing episode is just one of the many examples I could share with you about this. I think it is a bold choice to use magical realism in a novel such as Midnight's Children. I must come out and say that I have not read much Indian literature before, which is something that I would like to correct. I don't know if this is something uh, representative of Indian literature or not, but I guess that's also a bit irrelevant. The feeling that I had while reading this novel for the first time at my age and with my personal reading background was that this novel was perhaps written with a Western audience in mind, but I could be totally wrong here. I felt like I was reading um, something that portrayed India as this magical exotic place, somewhere that would fit the most stereotypical Western view on India. And I must say that that made me uh, feel rather uncomfortable. I would love to hear from Indian and perhaps Pakistani readers of this novel, apart from obviously people from anywhere else, and hear what you thought about this uh, possible exoticism in the novel. Am I completely off the mark here? And anyway, one thing that I found interesting about this novel was how it is narrated. So we have Salim, who is already an adult looking back and telling us the story of his life and everything else, but he's not really telling the story to us. There is a listener to whom he's talking all the time, and her name is Padma, who we assume is his girlfriend and somebody who really takes care of him. And I was fascinated by the scant details of their relationship that we were privy to here and there. To be clear, we can only piece their relationship together if we read very closely because Salim talks mostly about what happened in the past. But I thought this was a very clever narrative frame and one of the novel's uh, biggest achievements. I found Salim's story to be a little over the top at times. As I read on, I began to wonder how reliable we should consider him as a narrator and perhaps we could blame Salim rather than Salman Rushdie for the rhetorical flourishes, the plot twists and the magical elements. Salim is a raconteur, and if you enjoy someone who can spin a yarn, then I think you will enjoy this novel a lot. It is always risky, I think, to have a single protagonist in a collective story because you run the risk of sending out an individualist message. How can you write the story of India, at least, you know, the first few years of its history as an independent nation, if you focus on just one main character in a country that is so diverse in terms of ethnicity, languages and religion, and the novel deals with all of that, this novel attempts to deal with all the tensions that were present and I am afraid still are present in India, but I'm not the right person to talk about this. However, I can talk about this book as a novel, and I think that as a novel I wondered why Salim is the protagonist. Would this novel have worked better if it had followed different plot lines and had more than one protagonist, perhaps protagonists from different backgrounds, different cities? I don't know, and it is a bit pointless to ask yourself questions like this. Um, you just, you know, must judge the book for what it is and not try to second guess what it would have been like if you changed this or that about it. I am fascinated by memory and how memory is dealt with in literature and Midnight's Children is a novel that has memory and how unreliable or reliable it can be at its core. And I have to applaud Salman Rushdie's approach here for choosing a single individual like Salim as its narrator because while I'm not sure that having just one single point of view to tell such a big story is the right choice, and I'm not saying it's not, I'm just not sure if it is but it may very well be, but I think that it is great to have a narrator like him if one of your main themes is memory and how stories are told. I'm not an expert on Indian history, but I don't think novels should require their readers to be experts in anything. In this case, like many readers around the world, I'm not sadly that familiar with Indian history, but reading uh, on the novel, 
as I was pre prepping myself uh, to do this video, I read that the novel contains many factual errors about Indian history. And I think that being aware of those errors that Salman Rushdie very clearly planted on purpose is what will make us approach this novel knowing that we should not rely on Salim as a narrator 100%. It is not as if he's a liar. I don't think he's trying to deceive Padma. It is rather that he gets things wrong as most people do. His memory, like yours or mine, is not to be relied on 100%. And I think Midnight's Children makes that point expertly. I don't think Midnight's Children is hard to read despite not being that straightforward as a narrative. Apart from having a postmodern and reliable narrator, the events in the novel are not told in strict chronological order. There is this exuberant, seemingly chaotic way that the adult Salim uses to tell its story that is hard to achieve in fiction. And I highlight this because I don't want to give the impression that I don't think uh, Midnight's Children is a good novel. After all, that's not what I think. There is a lot about it that I admire and I want to convey that in this video. I think Midnight's Children is a fun novel to read and that might sound strange when you consider all the tensions and all the political stuff that it deals with. Salim is a great narrator. He knows how to engage the reader, how to build up to and then deliver a narrative twist. Of course, there are parts of the story that I enjoy more than others. The novel has three parts as it advances more or less chronologically, and I did not find every single episode equally interesting, okay? I'm afraid that, in fact, I did not love Midnight's Children, but I can see why many pe people and many readers love it. So I would actually recommend it to everyone because I think it is worth reading and there is a chance that you will love it, even if I didn't. Something that I enjoyed about this novel was the many references to literature, popular culture, and religious texts. Some of those references went over my head, but when I got many of them, uh, they usually put a smile on my face. Uh, Midnight's Children is one of the most vivid and evocative novels I have read recently, possibly ever. I think my background reading uh, some Latin American literature prepared me for reading this novel, but because the style and the references are such a mix of East and West, of America, Europe, India, I think most readers will get something out of it and enjoy at least part of it, if not outright love it. As to whether Midnight's Children is the best novel to have ever won the Booker Prize, I'm not the best person to know because I've only read a handful of novels that have won the Booker Prize over the years and very little from around the time this novel came out. But I hope you will let me know what you think about my review and what you think about Midnight's Children if you have read it. 